Alright guys, Tedco here back again today. It is the third day of the new year into 2020. Now today I wanted to talk about a couple of interesting topics. First of all, Katie Bedford made a change to her Twitter bio. Gonna talk about whether that could mean anything going forward. Of course, yesterday we talked about the, the probability at least of Puckett coming back for the upcoming season, probably to do some hosting work here or there as a freelancer throughout the CDL. Where does that leave Katie, who of course pretty much hosted the entirety of the CDL last season, moved all around the place, did the hosting, even at the, the event all the way over in London, London. You know, Lottie Van Praag, I think, did the hosting for the amateur side of things. So it's going to be interesting to see how that goes with the amateur side of things happening at some of these events. Um, I imagine it's on the organizations that are putting on the events to come to that decision themselves. Then wanted to talk about Chino, as is in the title of the video. It seems like there has been either a rule change or a rule that people have just realized is coming to effect, or at least as people have just realized that it actually affects them. The academy teams that are related to the professional teams, some of the, uh, the substitutes that were, you know, substitute for the professional team playing on the academy teams that can now no longer be the case due to a rule that either people have just realized about or has just been added i imagine it's something that people have just realized exists and um you know a lot of teams are now taking action the first you know real um you know uh, casualty i guess of the situation is going to be chino we'll talk about that in the coming minutes so like if you guys enjoy subscribe if you're new as always smash the like button all the good stuff um let's hop right into it so into call of duty first of all just to follow up on what we talked about yesterday i showed you guys um this tweet no one clicked but apparently Parasite and others said they're taking out Arc Club Hardpoint over Massive Domination. A couple of comments surrounding this as well. Arc Club Hardpoint, to be honest, is pretty terrible. I imagine if they cut off large swathes of the map, it doesn't need to be anywhere near as big as it is, um, then it might play significantly better. Uh, now, Fellow, this is uh, what he says to you know, follow up with. Fellow isn't really a name we've talked about in a long time. Remember when Fellow was like Felony, of course, the, the longer version of this was, uh, was a relevant force um, back in Black Ops 2 and Elevate and then Infinite Warfare and... Um, and the United days that he was on that team as well. Um, but, you know, not really the case anymore. But, yeah, I just wanted to share with you guys this clip uh, when he talks about it. it's likely that these maps have been removed. The way he says it almost implies from the entire game, from the CDL rules, rather than just the players deciding not to play them. Um, records, I don't think it's a GA, brother. Um, I was just getting fucking flooded. I had no ammo Yeah, I was, yeah, no, so I was just... Like it was shooting right in front of you. I saw you had no ammo. You're just finessing the pole. It's just those maps. I think I taken out right. from what I know yeah. at least. Yeah, that was yeah. exactly. Yeah, me and John, just me, and John. And so I imagine the rules aren't completely up to date yet, and all of that stuff. So maybe there is an update to come pre-league where these maps will be removed, and we'll have to see. So I wanted to go through this as well, real quick, with you guys. The Latin American hope of Call of Duty. Pretty interesting. A Brazilian team has moved over to Las Vegas. They're now going to be based in Las Vegas for the upcoming season, I believe. You know, a lot of money involved here. V Project is a team from Brazil that recently settled in Las. Las Vegas, United States, to compete in the Challengers, the Amateur Circuit, and the Call of Duty Franchise League. So these are the names. Um, a, th a few of these I recognize, I think, from a Brazilian team last season, which is pretty, you know, did kind of well in the amateur side of things. But really interesting to see that that's going forward. And it's really nice to see um, more international nature of the game. I love watching, you know, regular sports, which are very international on the whole. But also, you know, CSGO, for example, as an eSport, it's crazy good. Like, from a competitive standpoint, hey, you have, like, international teams almost. So you have, you know, teams from Sweden, teams from Denmark, teams from the USA and, you know, um, the CIS region like Russia, Ukraine and Chinese teams and all of this. And a lot of the times, due to chemistry reasons, they'll end up playing together. It's a shame we don't have that to the same degree in Call of Duty, given it's so huge in the States and in the UK and to some degree in mainland Europe. But apart from that, it's not played too much. A little bit in Japan, as we've seen a little bit, of course, in South America and also in South Africa. But apart from that, it's, it's pretty rare to see, you know, um, you know, national teams, apart from when you have the occasional UK team that will do something good and uh, sometimes a French team as we've seen uh, in the Black Ops 4 season of course and all of that stuff but yeah it would be nice to have it a more global league. Let's go on to this then so this is on Spoonbill and it seems like World's Bedford, that's Katie Bedford of course the host from the uh, the past season, updated their bio, took out desk host for at COD World League, put in esports host and on air personality and everything else stayed the same as far as I can know. She's also on the Bad Moon talent thing alongside Maven and Facento and all of those guys that have been working with that and since uh, since the end of the last season. So pretty interesting. First of all, key thing to note is that the COD World League as an at no longer exists, right? So Call of Duty World League is no longer a thing. This at has changed to the COD League, just the CDL for the upcoming season. The at now is just at COD League rather than at COD World League. So, um, you know, this at has been removed. So clearly Katie looked at a bio and thought, okay, well, this at is out of date. So I guess uh, it's time to change things up. Now, and I guess you couldn't say Desk Coast for 
about Codley because then it would be pretty obvious that she was going to be working with him for the upcoming season. So I don't really think this says anything, um, but it is somewhat interesting how there's no mention of Call of Duty now in the bio. Uh, there has been rumours that she would be working with him for the upcoming season, but we don't really know. Um, and with Puckett coming back into the fray and some other individuals potentially knocking on the door, who knows uh, what role Katie will play in the upcoming season. Maybe she's got other opportunities because I think uh, over the whole, um, she was pretty well received by the community in, in Call of Duty over the course of the season. So yeah, let's move on to this Chino situation. So Mike Apox, and uh, he was on the Opta Gaming Academy team. Now, Opta Gaming Academy team, it's not like they've announced it or anything, but effectively, if you're a substitute on Opta Gaming, as Chino and Gunja are, the Opta Gaming organization can decide, you know what, we're going to set up an academy roster and these guys can compete in the challenges side of things and uh, they can play for the, that money and try and do the best they possibly can. And if needed, Chino and Gunja can sub in for the main team. So it seemed like whatever, you know, of course, Chino and Gunja, the whole thing with the 15,000 pro points at the start of the season was a really big deal because then whoever those guys chose to play with them would have enough money to get funding to events from Activision. Um, but, you know, nowadays it's not quite the case, but still, if you're on the team with Chino and Gunja, then you're, you've got a pretty good chance, of course, getting funded to the event by the Opta Gaming organization itself. Not all organizations like Opta Gaming and whatever have decided to bring on academy teams. I believe London has. Um, I believe Seattle has. We'll look at that in a second. I'm not so sure about Dallas and stuff like this. So some organizations have decided not to. Some organizations have. But what it seems to have figured out is on the 27th of December, Mike says, due to league rules, my team will be needing a new fifth, preferably a sub or a flex. We will keep our top 10 seeding DM if interested. And Chino has been taken off the Opta Gaming Academy team and replaced by Believe. Now, um, this is a very interesting change, of course. Believe gets pretty lucky here. And the reasoning, as explained by JCAP, is the following. Each team needs to have a six-man at each event, but they can't be on a path to pro team because if they're needed to play, they can't have the scheduling conflict. Not a great rule. Thanks for cleaning it up. I'd heard similar, but I was confused why the other academy teams hadn't said anything yet. I was wondering too. Surely every team has to be aware of it and it's causing similar issues, but nobody's really done anything yet. So very interesting, right? Chino gets picked up onto this team with, I guess, the, the thinking at the time, or at least the promise that, yeah, you going to potentially join the starting roster. Of course, look, you look at that starting roster, you've got, you know, Jacob realistically is the only guy who could get replaced. I could see a possibility in the upcoming season of Jacob, you know, going out and Chino coming in. That's not out of the question. If Jacob, you know, maybe this is the real latter end of his career, his individual performances start to drop off. Of course, he has the other attributes on the team, but maybe it's just he decides at this point, maybe it's, it's worth stepping down. And if they don't have the results at the start of the season, it's a possibility that could happen, you know, halfway through the season or something. But I'm sure Chino was thinking, you know what, it's fine if I can't play on the main roster, I can at least I can play on the academy team and, uh, you know, that can go through nice and smoothly. However, I understand this reasoning from the CDL at the same time, right? You have to have a, a you know, six man nominated to substitute in at any moment. Let's say, you know, for whatever reason, if there was a medical emergency or something on the main stage, Chino might have to substitute in. We've seen that in the past in 100 Thieves on this just last season, right, where Priester was sick at, um, well, what event was it? Was it Fort Worth or maybe it was the, I think it was Fort Worth. And uh, a Pharaoh even had to substitute in then, and he had to play, and I think they lost to Reciprocity or something like that, or however that event exactly went. People thought they could have gone on to win that if Priester wasn't unwell at the time. So look, substitutes like this have to, you know, have to, you know, happen on occasion, and you, know, you wouldn't want the position where Chino is playing on the academy team across the other side of the hall, and then you just have to whip him up because Jacob's you know, gone down ill or something, and he has to go and play on main stage. Um, that wouldn't be the ideal scenario. Therefore, um, for all cases, they have decided that Chino, as I guess Opta Gaming's nominated first substitute, just cannot play at all. And he's not going to be able to play on the academy team just off the off chance that there was that, you know, scheduling conflict and someone did come down ill, right? Um, which is interesting. I can understand the utility of it. At the same time, it's a very rare circumstance and it means that Chino probably won't be able to get to play really at all, right? Um, because, you know, if he is substituted into the main team as an actually attempt to make the team better half halfway through the season, then fair enough. Um, and, you know, they could potentially do the mid-series S&D substitute kind of gig. Uh, but, you know, we're not really sure if that's going to that's gonna come to fruition yet. So it's very interesting, right? And it's disappointing, I guess, for Chino in terms of he could have been able to play the academy side and also potentially get substituted in. Now, because he's not likely to get substituted in, but just in case he needs to be, then he has to sit out all the academy games and they've had to pick up Believe instead. So it seems like those are the rules. Really interesting. And I imagine that people on other teams are also going to suffer from this in a way. 
today. This is the results from the uh, most recent two calendar, I think the 15th of December. And uh, this is what we see. So we have uh, this, uh, most of these teams are just normal um, amateur path to pro challenges. All of those uh, words are effectively being able to use interchangeably. But uh, just to have a look real quick at um, Oxygen Supremacy. Actually, no, that's not the team I was looking for. Well, this is one of them. Firstly, Atlanta Academy. They just straight up call themselves Atlanta Academy. Um, now, Zaptius and Gravity, I think, are the substitutes on Atlanta, which means that one of them won't be able to play on this team, and they'll have to sit out on the bench. Um, there's also, which team was I looking for? Oh, yeah, this one, Return of the Jedi, right? With a Panda and Proto, those are the substitutes on Seattle. One of those guys will have to sit out and, you know, step down from the team and let someone else come in to be their substitute. And we've seen the same thing happen with Cheen Burgers, which is the Opta Gaming Academy, with Chino having to step out and Robbie B has already retired here so the team is um, you know making quite a lot of changes and you know believe is now in that team in addition so really interesting couple of changes here and um, you know just uh, this was a quick comment back to the whole Katie thing and it's really interesting as, as, uh, as Slicky says not necessarily CDL doesn't exist anymore all the other commentators have generic on-screen talent description in their bio so yeah not necessarily does this mean so I'll just make this slightly smaller and yeah just to finish off with here then um, I remember this tweet came up a while ago from Prius CSGO and he talks about um, the CSGO matchmaking not being 128 tick and I find this kind of funny right because if you're um, you know, a player who plays Counter-Strike in matchmaking then you're playing on 64 tick servers whereas professionals play on 128 tick which means that you know if you want to go and line up a smoke as he says when you do a jump throw for example it you know, lands slightly differently on 128 than 64 tick um, which is you know obviously not an ideal situation and Blake Robin says if you're an outsider to esports you would assume that the game is being played exactly for online and professional matches is, um, yeah, League of Legends and CSGO where servers make a huge difference and Maven comes out with especially CSGO and lol Cold, COD even would like to have a word given there's the 12 hertz servers in Call of Duty. It really does put things into perspective right um, given we've got uh, 128 tick servers over in CSGO for professional and we can't even get up to uh, you know beyond 12. So yeah hope you guys enjoyed the video like if you did subscribe if you're new as always thanks for watching and I will see you next time.